Okay, quick uh, answer video and explaining testing a lot of DC stuff. Uh, I'm working on these off-grid projects. I've kind of set up a little workshop area in, in this uh, cargo trailer. And part of my electrical testing here involves seeing how many amps and what power requirement is for a lot of uh, common devices. That when we try to get them to run on native DC power, we do that so that we can make more efficient use of the solar system. And one of the things somebody asked about was, well, how many amps does it take to run one of these PWR Plus uh, chargers for the Dell laptops? Because what happens is a lot of these things run on uh, uh, native DC power. And a lot of times it's around 19, 19.2 volts, which is actually within the power range of a lot of high capacity lithium batteries for power tools. Kind of interesting if you could make this stuff all work. And I think it has something to do with the fact that the lithium batteries come from the same places. But obviously they're shaped differently, their connectors are different, all that kind of stuff. So what this unit does is it takes our, uh, our 12 volt, uh, which is just kind of a nickname for the power. It's anywhere from 11 to 14.5 volts and converts it over to the 19 volts and then powers, powers the computer. Because it's just a DC to DC conversion, we're losing a lot less power in a conversion than if I was to simply run the inverter all the time and then plug AC stuff into it. So we look for things that use a wall board and we look for things that are capable of running on DC power, use a DC power converter, and a lot of times it's just a plug adapter uh, to, to run that item off of our direct DC power system. I've opened this up to show how the fuses are and the way this little Suntec uh, circuit tester works. It's for DC and you use it for uh, measuring power drain. A lot of times in RVs and vehicles, stuff that uses these standard blade type fuses. It won't really work with any other type of fuse holder. It's got to be these standard blade type fuses. It plugs into it. Uh, you unplug the fuse, you plug this thing in. It has its own fuse so it's not overpowered. Although, according to the labeling, it's capable of handling up to uh, 30 amps. So right now, what it's doing is it's telling me that this computer is using you know, about 1.5, 1.7 amps of power. The computer is not charging. Okay, when it's charging, I think it goes up to about 3 amps. So, uh, but right now the battery's full, so it's not trying to charge itself. So somebody wants to know how this thing works, how many amps it uses. Uh, on the device, it says 10 amps maximum input, but the output is 4.62 amps. I'm guessing that's a maximum. I'm guessing that's while the computer is running at full tilt, full charge. The maintenance charge looks like it's 1.6 while the computer is running. The, uh, so the labeling, 10 amps, that would be roughly equal to... Um, you know a single large solar panel I, I just I've never seen it pull that much amperage okay so if it does pull that much amperage it's only going to do it temporarily it looks like your maintenance amperage 1.6 1.7 so I would say that you could probably keep a laptop going uh, fairly well uh, not constant usage but fairly well uh, you know 80 watt panel, 100 watt panel, I think you're going to be just fine. It, it, again, you're using it to charge a battery and the battery runs the system. Uh, that's not talking about adaptation, or let's say power tool batteries or something like that. So if you're in a bind, you could apparently go all the way down to maybe a 30 or 40 watt panel and still do fine, or even one of those 45 watt Harbor Freight kits. I just think if you use one of those harbor freight kits you're producing power at only a slightly faster rate than you're running it so if you've used your battery down on your laptop and then you need to bring it up this thing's going to be drawing more power it's going to draw power at a faster rate one of them one of those little harbor freight kits can produce it but if you've got let's say uh you know one of these 80 watt panels that I use in my uh, mobile array, uh, or I'm sorry, my carryout um, uh, carry solar generator, gonna be just fine. In fact, I it's bolted to the roof of another trailer right now, but I have a couple of 70 watt panels up there among other panels that are all mismatched, but they run the same voltage range, which is okay. 
I I wouldn't feel bad stepping down to a 70 watt panel to to run this. I I, I just don't think it'd be bad. I don't think it'd be a problem. Uh, we're at 1.6 the maintenance voltage. Uh, if we were unplugged for a while, supposedly it goes up to about four amps of uh, charging amperage. I'm sorry, uh, charging amperage requirement. If somebody wants to test some other devices, uh, I don't know, find some way of getting me the device so I can check it. But these little testers are maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks at Harbor Freight. It's just a little tricky to find at the store. I think they're over in one of the automotive parts of the store, not with their solar stuff. I uh, got to get some Velcro on the back of that so I can mount it up here and test some other stuff. And uh, just really quick here, maybe I could test a few other items, but we'll see what's happening.